doubling your growth every single year. You'll put yourself on a path to a billion dollars over the course of 10 years. And, and you know, doubling every year and achieving more and more every single year, that's a tall task. It's really hard to sustain and grow at triple digit numbers, uh, you know, that every single year, I'm growing 100% year over year mm. in every category. And when you do that, um, that's hard. That takes really talented people and it takes really, uh, you know, in, invested, engaged, uh, you know, financial partners. And it takes really, really engaged customers that see the value in what you're doing. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is David Mansilla. I've been being your host for a couple of years now. And it's a great pleasure to have with us, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm good, David. Good to be uh, with you today. You know, I was so excited to make this interview after we were doing the screening interview a couple of weeks ago. Um, I have just realized that we as, as the community of this beautiful uh, Northern Hemisphere um, in the free world have this privileged mindset where we operate on internet facilities. We turn on our phones, we use mobile applications, we, um, we have uh, cloud computing, we have Zoom meetings across the world, and we have no idea what it takes to, for that technology to work. And I'm saying that because you are in huge part responsible for a lot of that. So can you tell me uh, your full name where do you live and what do you do for a living? Yeah, absolutely. So my uh, my name is Jeff Uphughes. I'm the CEO of DC Blocks. We're a company that is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and we operate throughout the Southeast United States, building digital infrastructure for some of the largest cloud companies in the world, along with enterprises and governments and uh, communication carriers and those alike. That's fantastic, Jeff. Um, so for people that don't know, and uh, I'm going to get, you know, what I'm going to say right now might sound uh, primitive to some people, to some of the audience, but, you know, as this podcast is growing exponentially, we're getting all kinds, uh, all kinds of audiences. So I just want to remind people where the word cloud came from. And Jeff, you and I have white hair, so we saw the evolution of the Internet. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the folks, especially the younger generation that are beginning to become into people of leadership, they might not know. So before the cloud came about, we had something called server rooms in our offices and everything was managed by the local IT team. Then somebody came with the idea to create something called cloud computing. And the whole idea of cloud computing is to delegate the responsibility of managing that infrastructure to a much bigger entity where everybody could actually host their computers, but they wouldn't even be theirs anymore. So we went from, from server rooms in, in enterprises to co-hosting locations where you could actually rent a place on these amazing facilities to cloud computer where, where you don't even know where your stuff is running and it has redundancy and, and, and failover and you know, fire risk and disaster recovery managed. Um, and that's where the term cloud came from. Uh, so when people says, you know, I have my software on the cloud or I'm using the cloud, all they are saying is that there is huge companies now that run everything for, for enterprises that allows us as consumers just to have these applications running like magic, right? And Jeff, that's what you do, right? You are actually enable these com companies to to have this availability for us, to run the cloud for us, right? Well, in in many ways, I think you uh, you, you categorized it in the right way. Um, the more and more dependency that we put on applications or digital services that creeped in from our first, you know, cell phones or you know from the first smartphones uh, that that came into our computers that came into our television screens that came into our tablets you know all of those started in the same way you described it started in a uh, a server room in a closet or a small room that was within an office building and then it moved into a purpose-built facility that is more of a data center facility you would be able to lease 
space like a condo in that you're housing your computers in to then now the cloud computing side. And there's a good balance between what lives in the cloud and what still lives on computers within data centers. Um, the, the term cloud uh, really just says it's going to a data center. It just don't know, you don't know where it is. So, you know, we like to say here that the cloud has four walls. It's called a data center and you don't know where it's going to live or what it's going to do or what applications because they share in different ones. But you start entering things like artificial intelligence and machine learning and the aspects of uh, all the different types of intelligence or the chat GPTs of the world that that give us instantaneous answers to questions and problems. All that comes from computers that reside in buildings it's in that are literally just powering the things we do day in and day in. And that's what we do. We we build, operate, and own and support those facilities for where those computers lie. And we also build and operate the fiber networks that interconnect those facilities together. So in essence, uh, you know, we're part being the Autobahn that connects all this information that runs through it. And we're part owning these large buildings that you know, are housing some of the biggest applications you find on your mobile banking or your uh, your automobile uh, in in diagnostic in information, or it might be hosting this Zoom call, or it might be hosting, uh, you know, other types of applications that you've just come to be accustomed to. So it's an exciting time because we're not slowing down using any type of digital services and uh, the market just continues to keep growing. And how how did the company got positioned into into creating catering to the, to 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 supply uh, these facilities? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, I've been in this business for the better part of thirty five years, so uh, I've kind of seen it full circle. I, I saw it early from uh, you know when you're when you're building the telephone networks that that really enabled us to communicate at a less cost basis around the world and you know some of the original long distance side i saw it from the first launching of the internet as you mentioned about some of the gray hair that i have and seeing and i was responsible for uh you know a good portion of companies that helped build the infrastructure back then that was just the internet communication and and what we knew is isps or internet service providers or knew as application service providers uh, and i had a front row seat at you know, playing a lot of different roles. So I've been in this industry for a long time. And you, you, if you're fortunate enough, like, like I have been, I've learned from a lot of really, really good leaders along the way. So it, it gave me an opportunity. So to, uh, to create avenues or windows of opportunities that we're able to see and seize, and then surround myself with really, really good people that say, how do we go solve this puzzle? Mm -hmm. And to me, there's not problems that exist. There's challenges, but really they're only just puzzles that need to be solved. And if you find a great team that you can go solve the puzzle in this world of digital infrastructure, amazing can be uh, can be possible. And uh, you know we're uh, we're very fortunate and blessed that we're able to operate in markets we love across the southeast with a team we love, with customers we love, and uh, and it's been uh, it's been quite a journey to see how it's really growing at just an accelerated pace. That's fantastic. So your responsibility is for the majority of the Southeast region in the United States, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, we we, we operate, uh, you know, across no, numerous markets today. So, you know, we're headquartered in Georgia. We operate in South Carolina where we've got, uh, uh, you know, capabilities and land in, in North Carolina. We're in we're in, uh, as I mentioned, Georgia. We're in Tennessee. We're in Alabama. Uh, you know, we're continually expanding into additional markets uh, all throughout the Southeast. Uh, what do you think, Jeff, uh, is the is the secret sauce of your success? Because even though the, the type of work that you do is very unique, there is a lot of competition out there. And uh, especially large IT companies, large multinationals, they have, number one, all the money in the world and all the resources in the world to choose whoever they want. Why do, why would they choose you? <laughs> Well, there, there's there's three pillars for which we've built this business on that I continue to keep repeating every day to our customers and you know all of the uh, you know the the members that work here on the DC Blocks team. It's we execute by first building trust. We do that in a very collaborative teamwork environment, 
and we do that with tenacity every day that we're going to outwork everybody and we're going to ensure that we under promise and over deliver in our execution to our customers and when you listen really closely to what your customers are having their challenges and solving uh the, the the things that are in front of them if you help them solve the puzzle and you do so with utmost transparency and and just being good people i mean at the end of the day uh business is not that hard uh when when you put people first and when you're putting people first and you're listening to things and you have creative ways to solve the puzzle and you have uh you, you have really really smart people then i've learned that just just get out of their way let the really really smart people uh you know configure and do things that solve the puzzle for the customer and uh and, and do so repetitively over and over again and you know so for us um you know we uh we've been preaching the culture is what makes a difference there's a lot of people that have more money there's a lot of people that have more scale and size in their companies there's not a lot of people who care more than what we do or engage more than what we do uh or 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 really outwork what we do in solving the uh, the puzzle for our customers you know jeff you touch a great point i have not seen a successful company that doesn't have a great culture uh, you know and and if they happen to become successful without a good culture they go out of business very quickly especially in hard recessions when the recession hits is a way for the market to get rid of the fat all the companies that became rich just because there was an abundance of money right not because they had a beautiful culture isn't it it is and and you know you, you I, i'm a firm believer that you have a culture uh that that you you intend to have only if you reinforce it and you you watch over it you've got to be the protector of the culture day in and day out and and it's got to be something that uh you know those are values uh that have to be aligned to to people who believe in them and if they don't you know then then you, you know you you can't have that culture in the same way if people aren't believing in the shared values of what you have and and it's it's something you really have to work on i mean i know that you know we work on it every day gosh knows we ha we have issues and make mistakes and and uh and do everything that is uh is not always correct in every case but you know i'll tell you that when you have really really good people and you do so with respect and honesty and integrity and transparency and all the things that i mentioned before about the three t's of trust teamwork and tenacity um you 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 can accomplish a heck of a lot you know and i truly believe that by making mistakes is what is when you learn the most right once you you hit sort certain level of success if you don't stretch yourself enough you're not going to keep growing right and when you grow you will make another mistake and that's what you said like oh well, everything that you just told me for me is just resembles a humble attitude because it's humility that allows you to recognize that you're making a mistake and you can actually show it to solve it in a, in a in a team setting right yeah i mean business is about um you know putting yourself in positions that uh that you can capitalize on later so so you know it's not luck it's putting yourself in the position it's putting yourself in a position by earning people's trust and respect over a long period of time and and, and when you when you do that you know you're going to get a lot of opportunities that come your way and you have to be uh you know eyes wide open to see when the opportunities exist and you also have to be eyes wide open to to saying look hey we made a mistake and own up to it but um you know overall i mean we're in a really blessed environment today of uh the digital infrastructure business is uh is growing at just a alarming pace uh you know we're we are executing at, you know as good as anybody is but you know like i mentioned uh you know we're trying to stay really really focused uh and concentrated around the southeast united states because i believe that uh when we're there uh we let our customers take us into other markets uh whether that be around the country or around the world you don't go jumping off into it to do it because you can you do it because you should because you're solving the puzzle for a customer by helping them better so you know that's really what has has helped us grow our business um and uh and doing so in a way of I learned a long time ago if you listen to your customers and you do what they tell you to do uh you're going to have more success than not. Mm. No that's for sure. And 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 also motivating your employees, you know, for for me uh I used to talk about culture in all my businesses but 
I didn't really believe it I, I because I didn't understand it. It was just a, a poster in a wall that, I, you know, that, you know, that a consultant came and, and put there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I actually really, I was almost in the, you know, I, I was almost bankrupt in, 20, in 2012. And then I had to take a year to learn really what leadership was and how to really create a culture. And when it came down to it, I realized that culture is nothing more than the set of filters and values that somebody uses to make decisions when the boss is not watching. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> it is. It's it's uh you know, if you if you can't have the conversation in front of somebody then 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 what are you hiding in the conversation? Is that something that you should you shouldn't be talking about or shouldn't be doing? It, exactly. When no one's looking, what are the actions and the culture that that in that that uh you know, empowers you to make the the decision that is aligned with those values. And um, like I said, I mean, you, David, you got to do this every single day and you just have to reinforce it. And, and the value based decisions for what you make, um, yeah, they, they have to be they have to be aligned to that. And you have to have buy in across everybody, which, you know, is uh, is not the most easy thing. But uh, certainly it's uh, it's something that uh, if you get it right, it works amazing. That's incredible, Jeff. Um, in your career, looking back a little bit, when was that that breakthrough moment when you you actually realized that you now were in a senior enough leadership position to be responsible for a lot of what the company is doing? You know, I think it, I, I wouldn't give I wouldn't give my roadmap or my journey uh, to to say, hey, this is the easy way to do things. You know, I forced myself to take different roles and responsibilities uh, a lot of times. It's get involved in, uh, you know, understanding the customer was the first one, which is, okay, you you get into a business development or a sales role. You, you then understand, okay, well, what attracts those customers, which kind of pull you into a marketing role. Uh, the priority of focus uh, says, hey, what are you positioning of your product or service to a customer? You have to get involved in product roles and understand, you know, what's it mean and, and, and how companies make money. And then into operating roles and how you support it. So, you know, I, I knew that I was, I, I, I the, the switch went off for me of, hey, I can think I can be in a really, really good leadership role by sharing the experiences for what I've had in multiple disciplines or uh, around the, uh, around the C-suite of what I've done. And, and, and when you see it from a lot of different perspectives, you often learn more from the mistakes and the bad leaders you've been around than, than the ones of where everything went well. And and I also learned that you know that it, all of us have different gifts and how we how we are engaging with people. Uh, I'm a people person, uh, people first type person, and and I'm always going to ensure that you know I am listening a lot closer than than uh, than what many's do. And you know you have to be able to listen to then understand what the issues are, and then your job as a leader is to remove the. Uh, remove the obstacles that uh, that everybody has so it's been uh, it's been something for me I just have to uh, I, I can't point to any one thing other than I experienced a lot of different areas and you know that prepared me to take different leadership roles that's beautiful um, if you had to go back again and do it all over again what would you change so, so like let's say you you could go into a time machine and go back 15 20 years into your career what would you tell to yourself? Be patient, but be quick. That's a lot, of, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of times. A lot of times, I was, uh, I was too impatient, and I forced things, uh, and and I wasn't patient for the results to take place. But when things do, you know, like when opportunities come, you have to be prepared to then, to then act and be decisive. Otherwise, you'll miss the window. And and you know, there's there's lots of opportunities that knock on your door you have to be able to recognize it and so uh, but you have to be patient for results and you have to be patient and understand that it, it may not be an issue with a person it may be an issue with the process of what's keeping you back uh, and and not achieving all the success of what you uh, you know what you really desire so you know for me it's um, you know what what would I what would I say to somebody you know or, and do 20 years ago I say be patient but be quick and your understanding of of capturing and seizing the opportunities that are in front of you. 
That's beautiful. I wish I had that. <laughs> I made so many mistakes, Jeff. But you know, I, I finally figured it out. But it, it, it was it was a, it was a long journey for sure. Um, for the company, how how did the pandemic affected you? Uh, did you guys get get into trouble? Like, I remember I was in a, in a business trip, and my wife calls me over and she says, "I'm I'm getting your assistant to get you back home because they are about to close the borders and nobody knew what was going on." And I didn't even know that my business was going to survive. Uh, what did you do during that critical time when you knew that the massive lockdown was coming? You know, the the, the pandemic was was you know, devastating for for so many, and uh, it was devastating on lives. It was dev devastating on businesses. Um, for us, you know, the, the 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 sense of what we're on today, or the you know the application we're on today, Zoom. Zoom became part of a or Teams or uh, you know, Google, Google Hangouts or, you know, uh, Google Video and other things, what you're doing, it became part of everyday life. And, and that drives the infrastructure that resides within our facilities and drives the infrastructure related to how much network capacity for what you need. So, you know, for us in the pandemic, our business started accelerating because of the digital technologies of, you know, what was taking place with streaming TV, what was taking place with uh, your smartphones and the amount of new applications that were coming. What was taking place with the adoption more of video? Uh, what was taking place with, uh, you know, you have to make, make sure that you can't, uh, uh, you, you have to get your computing room out of your office that no one was in anymore into a third party facility that you knew would be maintained and operated to the specs of what uh, you needed to be in. So for us, uh, it was an accelerant. That's incredible, eh? <laughs> you know, uh, so I run multiple companies. One of them is a custom software solutions business. And uh, half of our clients were manufacturing companies. So in one week, I got half of the work of the year canceled. And I'm like, OK, what do I do? So I waited and I waited a little bit. But then I acted quickly, like you said, you know, in three months, I not only, not only recovered those contracts, but I actually started accelerating when people realized that they needed more software solutions, just like yeah. you. But for me, I actually saw three months where I'm like, are we going bankrupt here? <laughs> you know, yeah, it was it, it certainly was an interesting time in our our, our, our our business. If you if you look at the the growth we're seeing over the course of the last seven years is has been around 170 percent compounded annual growth rate across multiple uh, multiple areas, whether it's, you know, customer customer new bookings and sales to, uh, you know, just just growth of the amount of units or capacity for what we sell. Um, there's uh, there's many metrics that are there and, you know, it's continually accelerating. Uh, but we're, we're having to do that uh, with the same discipline in the same uh, engagement uh, that we did when we were early because you know you have a little bit more resources but you have to ensure that you've got the right uh, uh, the right team in front of you and you're interacting with customers in the right way that is an incredible growth rate like 107 percent accumulated compounded is incredible especially for a company your size something like that for a for a small business will actually kill them I tell you because it almost happened to me too. In two, from 2009 to 2011, we grew exponentially and I ended up almost bankrupt at the end. <laughs> How do you manage that? Because especially when, you know, where do you find labor? Because the, the one thing that happened with COVID is nobody wanted to work. Uh, yeah. Right? The, the big thing for us, David, is is alignment of interests. And, and you need alignment of interests across your employee base. You need alignment of interests across your investor base. You need alignment of interest across the, uh, the the people who are lending you money, and you need alignment of interest with your customers. And if you're all aligned with the the outcomes that everybody clearly understands that are possible, only then can you achieve the growth of what I mentioned. It's uh, it, it's it's not an easy task. I mean, we call this. I mean, I read a book a number of years ago called Blueprint to a Billion. And the one thing that you can say about Blueprint to a Billion, the one commonality and in, across multiple industries that everybody had was, you know, if you're doubling your growth every single year, you'll put yourself on a path to a billion dollars over the course of 10 years. And, and you know, doubling every year and achieving more and more every single year, 
that's a tall task. It's really hard to sustain and grow at triple digit numbers. Uh, you know, that every single year I'm growing a hundred percent year over year mm. in every category. And when you do that, um, that's hard. That takes really talented people and it takes really, uh, you know, in, invested, engaged, uh, you know, financial partners. And it takes really, really engaged customers that see the value in what you're doing. You know, in my case, I, I went to the point that the burnout was so great that I actually had a heart attack. Like the whole result of that exponential growth, because I didn't know what I was doing, he ended up almost killing me, like physically killing me, not only having the company almost bankrupt, you know? Yeah, and, well, it's, you know, any company, uh, you know, the speed of the leader is the speed of the team, uh, you know, and, and you also have to understand that, uh, you know, not everybody can run at that pace. So you have to have a lot of self-awareness and, and a lot of understanding of when are you pushing too hard and when's the right time to back off and when's the right time to uh, continue to grow. That's incredible. So, th th thank you very much for uh, some of our time today. Um, I, I know I'm going to have to run here. I know we're, uh, you know, we we started a little bit late, but I'm going to have to uh, to run. I've got a few things that are uh, really pressing. So I apologize for uh, for cutting this a little short. Oh, no, no worries, Jeff. Uh, the time was fantastic. In fact, we were actually just finishing. Uh, thank you so much for for all your input, for your wisdom, for for having this time with the audience. Uh, it shows that not only you but your company is doing great things, and you have a benevolent heart. Uh, if people would like to get in touch with you or find out more about your business, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find us at dcblocks.com, uh, or you can find us, uh, you know, on social media channels for uh, for uh, X or Twitter. Uh, as well as you can find us on other social media channels. Uh, you know, best way is to find us at dcblocks.com. dcblocks.com. Jeff, thank you so much. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you, David. Appreciate your uh, your willingness to have me on your show. Sounds good. <laughs> Blessings. Cheers. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Leaders in Tech podcast. Check in next week to keep learning how to use technology and leadership to change the game. See you next time.